what's happening in the world that has made cyber the perfect weapon. And why do I call it the perfect weapon? I call it the perfect weapon because it's easily deniable, it's dirt cheap to produce, it's hard for nations to trace. You know, in the nuclear age, you could go into a big cave in Colorado Springs and you could see if a missile was launched at the United States where it was coming from, which completely changed the paradigm of deterrence because you knew where to strike back and who to strike back at. That's all gone in cyber. Deterrence is not working in cyber. And if you want an example, just look in this room. It's the basement of the Democratic National Committee. On the left, you see that battered file cabinet. You'll notice it's missing a handle on the bottom. That is one of the last remnants of the Watergate break-in in 1972. To get the data that was inside it, the Nixon administration had to send a group of burglars into the Watergate. They propped open the door, busted in, propped open the door, got the data out of that, and of course got arrested, and you know the rest of the story led to the end of Nixon's presidency. To the right of it, wrapped in plastic, something that looks like a sort of oversized um, laptop computer, is the server that the Russians broke into in the Democratic National Committee in 2015 and 2016. You know, we all talk about our data's in the cloud and so forth, and yes it is, but for the Democrats, the data was all sitting right there. None of us can remember anything that was in the filing cabinet, because it was never released publicly and it was pretty boring. We all know what was in that server, because of course it led to the resignation of the chairman of the Democratic Committee, and it led to the whole investigation that ultimately resulted in the Mueller report that we may actually get to read in the next few weeks. So what we've seen here is a shift, of course, in the way you obtain data that you all know far better than I do. To get inside that server, no one had to break into the Democratic National Committee, prop open a door, get arrested. In fact, they never left their offices in Red Square except to go out and get lunch and dinner. And we know that because Dutch intelligence had turned the cameras on in their offices. So, that's the world in which we face today. It is different than the world that we expected to come out of this. The internet was supposed to be the great unifying technology that would bring all of us together. Today, cyber attacks have become pervasive. And more importantly, because no one wants to take on the United States or its allies directly in a military conflict, it's become the primary way that states exercise power without triggering a war. What's the common aspect of every major hack you've read about in the past five years? We fumbled around trying to figure out how to answer them, but no one seriously considered using the US military to go strike at a country that came in after our stuff. And that's because cyber attacks are calibrated to be short of war weapons. Highly effective, but designed to keep somebody from striking back. Now, what people in the technical community did for the first number of years was think about what are the technological solutions that we could come up to this. And a few weeks ago here, we had the RSA conference. Many of you, I'm sure, were there. And if you walk down in the hall in the Moscone um, uh, main building out there, there were four or 5,000 data security companies, way more than the market can, can hold on to, I'm sure, or make thrive. But every one of them was designing a different way to go block or detect these kinds of attacks. I would argue that in the end, we're going to need some combination of both technological solutions and political solutions to this. Because the fact of the matter is, higher walls will only lead to more innovative attacks. And while you won't solve all of them with the technology, as in arms control, we had to both reduce the number of arms and come to some understandings about what's on limits and off limits.